hey, engineering students. In this video, we're going to go through the process of building a prototype with Arduino uh, for something I call a spaceship interface. And it's meant to kind of simulate an old time science fiction movie uh, idea of what they thought computer interfaces was going to be like in the future. Turned out they were wrong, but we can do this with an Arduino and it gives us a chance to learn how to use some more programming features in Arduino. So what we're going to do in this video is um, build this spaceship interface thing. So this is kind of a version of uh, something a cruder version of which we're going to make. The person pushes the button. You can see a bunch of lights, a sequence of lights light up. Push a different button, different things happen. Lights light up and turn off. This is kind of what people envisioned when uh, Star Trek was originally filmed that uh, human interfaces with computers would be like. I didn't imagine that we would be typing on keyboards or sharing video. They had no idea that those things were possible in those days. So we're going to make something crude version of something like this. That's our objective. Ours won't be quite so fancy. This is a video of the one that I made. Press a button. We alternate back and forth between two red lights. When the button's not pressed, there's a green light. That's the whole process. Of course, you're working with Tinkercad, so you'll be just simulating that, uh, but that's the basic idea. Okay, so here are the tools that we need. If you were working with actual Arduino, you'd need to get all these actual physical parts together. Um, some wires for connection, uh, some resistors, 220 ohm and 10 kilo ohm resistor, a couple of red LEDs, green LED, and a button. So here's what we're going to build. This is the thing that we're after. Let's take a quick preview before we actually build it. We have a button switch across the ditch in a breadboard. Uh, one end of the button is connected to pin number two on an Arduino. And also there's a resistor there. And this is, looks like a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, the other side of the button is attached to the positive rail of the breadboard, which is powered by this red wire from Arduino and grounded by this black wire from the Arduino. The green LED is attached to ground through a 220 ohm resistor and the anode side, the positive side, is attached to pin number three. The first red LED, pin number four through the LED resistor to ground, also a 220 ohm, and pin number five through the second LED and then through a resistor to ground. So that's what we're uh, going to assemble here and then we're going to write some code. Well, I'm in my Tinkercad workspace here, so I'm going to start assembling the things that I need. I know I'm going to need a breadboard, so I'm going to search for breadboard. Here's my breadboard. I grab this breadboard, pull it onto my workspace. Okay, and I want an Arduino, obviously, so I'm going to search for Arduino, Arduino Uno, that's what I'm looking for. Oops, accidentally started drawing a wire. Don't want that. Um, I'm going to need some resistors. There's a resistor. I'm going to drag this on there. And I'm going to change this to a 220 ohm. And I need three of those. So I'll put another one on there. 220 ohms. And another one. And then I need a 10 kilo ohm resistor too. So I'm going to drag another resistor on here and change this to 10 and it's already kilo ohms. Okay, so that's my resistors. I will need a push button, which is right here. So I'll pull that on. I need three LEDs. So here's one of my LEDs. I'll just pop it up here. Um, that's red. I need another red one, so I'll pull another one up there. And then I need a green one, so I'll pull the LED on here and change it to green. Uh, I think that's everything I need. Now I just have to wire it all together. 
So I'm going to start by putting this switch on my breadboard and I'm going to install it across the ditch here. Uh, the input to this switch is tied to ground through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So I'm going to attach this resistor, that's my 10k resistor, between the, the negative rail, that's the top one here, it's labeled negative, and one side of my switch. That switch also goes to pin number two. So I'm going to attach a wire from another one of these holes in that same row to pin number two. I'm going to make this yellow so it matches the drawing that we were working off of. Um, and then I'm going to just kind of move this around a little bit to keep things a little clear. Make it a little bit neater. Okay, now um, LEDs. I'm going to put my green LED in place, put it right here. The anode side is on the right, and I want that to be tied to pin number three. So I'm going to attach a wire from three to there. Make that yellow because it's yellow on the drawing. And I think I will do it kind of like that. The cathode side, the negative side, is going to go through a resistor to ground. So I'll attach this resistor, this 220 ohm, between the cathode side of my green LED and the ground rail. Next to that, I'm going to put a red, so skip a couple of spots. Um, this is attached to pin 4, so a wire from there to the anode. I'll do it there. I'm going to leave that as green just so we can differentiate between the two. And do that. And then the second red LED, pop that in place. Um, this is attached to pin 5, so wire from 5 to that cathode, or to that anode, sorry. And I'm going to just change this to maybe purple. Oops, I'm accidentally drawing another wire. Didn't want to do that. Do this. There we go. Now I need resistors on those other two LEDs going from their cathodes to ground. So I'll put one of the 220 ohms there, and the other 220 ohm will go there. Uh, I need power and ground to my breadboard. So I'm going to run a wire from the 5 volt pin of my Uno. I'll make that red because it's a red power pin, and I will stretch that kind of out of the way, like that. And then I need a wire going from the, one of the GNDs, one of the grounds, to my ground rail, which is that one right there. I'll make it black because it's negative and neaten that up just a little bit. Okay, so there's my wired up spaceship interface. I think I've got everything in place and it's probably time to start writing some code now. So I'm gonna go to code and I don't want blocks, I want text because I'm programming here in sketch code. Get rid of what's already there. And now, the first thing I'm going to do before my setup, I want to define an, an integer variable. So here's how I do that. I go int, and then switch state is going to be the name of my variable. So this is just a name, switch, and I'm going to capitalize state. It's often uh, done in variables. A variable is made of two words. It has to be one word, so you just capitalize in the middle like that. Um, equals zero. So here's what this is saying. It's saying this is a variable to store the state of the switch. So it'll be zero if the switch is off, and it'll be one if the switch is on, and we're just going to establish it as zero originally. So this command, int, what that, what that means is define a variable with this name and then give it this value. 
So that's the only thing we need before we start our setup. So now, void, setup, and remember we open and close parentheses, and then we open a set of curly brackets. So what we're gonna put in setup here is a bunch of pin modes. So the first pin mode will be for um, pin two. Pin two collects the input from the switch. So it's two and then input. Remember that all has to be capitalized and spelled correctly. Don't forget your semicolon. So this is saying pin number two, we're looking for inputs on this pin. Next, another pin mode. Um, I'll type in pin capital MOD, and then pin three is gonna be an output pin. Remember, it has to be capitalized. Don't forget your semicolon. So pin three is an output going to the green LED. I'm gonna copy and paste to save myself some work and also save myself the chance of misspelling. Pin four is also an output that goes to the first red LED, and pin five is also an output that goes to the second red LED. And that's all we have in setup is just some pin modes. So I'm gonna close my curly brackets, and then I'm gonna start my loop. So I type void, loop, open close parents, and then I'll open my curly brackets for the opening of my loop. Okay, so the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna assign to the variable switch state what is the actual state of the switch. And this is the command we're gonna use for that. I'm gonna type in the name of the variable, switch state, and it's gotta be spelled exactly the way we defined it, otherwise things aren't gonna work, equals, and then I'm gonna put a, a command in here called the digital read. So in the last sketch that we uh, worked on together, we had a digital write. This is just the opposite. This reads the input. So it's digital, all lowercase, and then capital R on read, so digital read, and then it wants to know where do I read from, and I'm gonna read pin two, so I put a two in parentheses after it, and then semicolon to end that line. So what this line does is it looks at pin two, and reads what it is, it's digital, so that means it's either gonna read as a one or a high or an on, or alternatively it could be a zero or off or low. Now we're gonna do a test. So we're gonna use this command, it's gonna say if, and then in parentheses, I'm going to put a condition that it's gonna to check to see if it is true. And what we're gonna check for is if the switch is off. So how I do that is I put the variable switch state. Remember, you gotta spell it right. And then if it's equal to low, some things are gonna happen. Now I can't just type equals because that means a variable assignment in programming. So I use a double equals. So it says if the switch state's condition is low, so capital L-O-W, and then I close my parentheses. So if the switch state is low, in other words, if the button hasn't been pushed, these next things are gonna happen. So I put an open curly bracket, and then these are the things that will happen if the switch state is low. First is a digital write. And I'm gonna digital write to pin three, that's the green LED, a high. Oops, has to be all caps. So what that's saying is turn on the green LED because that was what was hooked up to pin three, semicolon. Now I'm gonna do some more digital writes here. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it. And I'm gonna do it again. If the button hasn't been pushed, then I want pin four, which is the first red LED, and pin five, which is the second. LED to both be low. So I'm gonna change the threes to four and five, and I'm gonna change both of the highs to low.
So if the button hasn't been pushed, turn on the green light, turn off the red lights is what it's saying. Okay, so now I'm gonna close my curly brackets and then I'm gonna put another command in here and this goes along with the if. This is called an else. So this is saying, if switch state is low, do this thing. But if it's not, in other words, else, then do this other stuff. So I'm gonna open some curly brackets and then I'm gonna do another set of digital writes. So I'm gonna copy all three of these lines just to save myself some time and paste those. So else means it's not low, which means somebody pushed the button. And if somebody pushed the button, we want the green light to go off. So I'm going to digital write three low, because that's where the green button is. And then I want to alternate back and forth between uh, the first and second LEDs being on. So I'm going to turn the first LED, the one on pin four, high. And I'm going to leave the second one off. Now I'm going to pause for a fourth of a second. So the next line is going to be a delay. Oops, got to spell right. And if you remember, this is in milliseconds, so a quarter of a second will be 250 milliseconds. And then I want to switch red LEDs. So I'm going to turn four off and turn five on. So I'm going to copy all of this code now and paste it. I'm going to leave three low, but I'm going to change four to low. And now I'm going to change five, the second LED, to high. And then I'm going to wait another 250 milliseconds and then try again. So I've got to close some curly brackets here. So I've got to close curly bracket for the else. And I have to close curly bracket for the whole loop. And there's my code. So when we upload this sketch, the first thing that will happen is it will define that variable. It will define the pin modes for pins 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then it will continuously run this loop where if this, it checks for the switch and then it does whatever it's supposed to do depending on if the switch has been pressed or not, and then it checks the switch again. Okay, so let's start the simulation and see what happens. Simulation is running. I'm going to get rid of my code so I can see what's going on. You can see the green LED is lit. The button has not been pressed. I'm going to press the button down. and nothing's happening. So I'm gonna stop my simulation and go back and look at the code and see if I can figure out what's wrong. Well, there doesn't look to be anything wrong with the code. Let's see if there's something wrong with my wiring. Ah, I see it. Here's what's going on. There is no signal high that can ever get to Arduino because the um, other side of the switch is connected to nothing. I missed a wire. So I'm gonna connect from here to the positive rail. I'll make that red, because it's positive. And now, if I press the button, it'll actually send a high signal to pin number two. Okay, now let's start our simulation over again. Should work this time, hopefully. Green light's on. When I press the button, it alternates back and forth between red and the two reds. I let up on the button, green light comes on, red stop blinking, do it again, success.